Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today I'm over in the barn and we're going to be doing bits and pieces on the Mini. This is a video that I think we filmed in a few segments because it's kind of a bit here and a bit there to get things done because basically what I need to do now is to crack on with getting it back down to a bare shell. We've done the big ticket headline items, the engine and transmission are out, the front subframe's out, uh, the interior is pretty much mostly gone. What I need to do now is all the niggly fiddly bits and bobs which are going to take a little while so I've got to get all the ancillary parts like the lights, uh, brake components, windscreen wipers, the dashboard parts, that kind of stuff. So basically we've got ourselves down to a bare shell ready to be completely stripped back to bare metal and then painted. And I think this is quite an important thing to do with this car because it's been repaired a few times over the years and you can see the paint is flaking off in places. It's had previous repairs, which oh, I think is a previous repair. It's great for a, a few years, maybe a decade or so, and then it starts to kind of resurface and then you've got to go back and then just double check. So that's what, where we are at with this car right now. So without further ado, as I believe they say, or I'll just quickly say is, please head over to furiousdriving.co.uk. I've got the wrong mug, I've not got the mini mug. Um, right, let's go and get a spanner out and start stripping things off this thing. The wiring loom is the one I'm dreading. I have a feeling I went in with Bulldog already on these things, but I don't remember when or if I actually did or just thought about it. So, just going to blather up everything under this engine bay, whoops, with release penetrating fluid, with penetrating fluid so that hopefully nothing is going to give me a fight when it comes down to it. Oh, I've got headlight bezels to do as well. How do these come off? Because I've never done a Mini before, so everything is an adventure. Now, apparently this little plastic uh, grill just there is very rare indeed, so I need to make sure that comes off safely and in one piece. Thanks, Mark, for pointing that out. Hmm, these electrics look interesting. Before I had the Mini, pretty much every tool I had over here was in metric because that's what all the cars over here were. Um, my Rover P6s are all Imperial, so I've got quite a lot of Imperial tools over at home. So I've had to sort of gradually collect Imperial stuff over here. Fortunately, uh, a friend, his dad was uh, giving a clear out because he's not using any garage stuff anymore. Give me a nice G-Dore or geo door, whatever you call it, uh, Imperial socket set and I picked up for two quid at the NEC the other day, a basic set of Imperial spanners. So there's a few less things I need to be carrying over to the barn each time I come over here. Now I think it's gonna be a half inch, isn't it? Ugh, ouch, yes it is. That's a shame we can't get a socket on that one. Oh. Now this little area here did give us a certain amount of trouble when we were, oh, that's coming undone really easy now. Um, when we were trying to take the engine out because the brake hose unions were just rock solid and I could do nothing with them. That's actually coming undone really easily, having been soaked in Bulldog for quite a while. Is that 7 sixteenths just there? Oh, that's, that's just winding out easy as you like. Uh, yeah, on the day we were trying to do it, none of this stuff, we just wouldn't play with this at all. It was just rock solid. Now it's been soaking in Bulldog for a few weeks. Um, yeah, it's happy as you like to just undo, basically finger tight. If you've not seen the most recent um, Crown Victoria update, I had been stuck completely on a caliper bolt which would not shift. I left it soaking in Bulldog, admittedly for about a week and a half because I went to Sweden in between, but it having been completely rock solid frozen, it basically just wound out on a spanner. I don't know what's in this stuff, but it's brilliant. Now when I said this is where we get into the fiddly boring stuff, not, not boring necessarily, but certainly fiddly, this is kind of what I mean because there are lots of little parts, I've got to take off other little parts. And in many cases like this, it's easier when it's attached to the car. So I've got some leverage against it, as opposed to trying to do it freehand later on. And it saves me buying a new component. That's quite a long bolt. It's a half inch, I reckon, there. <sighs> Hancock's half inch. 
Now is that a captive? Is that, yeah, it's going to end up with a spanner on the other end, I should say. Because of course, oh, it's right down the far end now. Fantastic. Tell you what, it doesn't matter how well equipped your workshop is, unless you've got a magnet on a stick, you're not a proper workshop. Ta-da! All right, here we go. Hey, another Bulldog win. This is the engine top support and the bracket that holds the hydroplastic pipe in place and also goes through the bracket for the, um, I think it's the brake master. Why aren't you coming out? The natural hammer. Right, so that's now off, well sort of free, the um, hydroelastic brackets free. It's a little bit rotten, I guess I'll have to get a new one of them. You can see it's a bit moth-eaten. Um, obviously we'll need new hydroelastics anyway. The more I replace, because it's rotten, the easier this particular job gets. <laughs> now I get the brackets off this thing. One is nice and easy to get to, because it is just a socketable one. The other one, a little bit harder, because it's going to be a half inch spanner on it, because it's really hard down low. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Typically, I didn't bring my ratcheting spanners though today. Right, this bracket should now be free, but it's not. There are two more bolts underneath here which hold, one of which holds the master cylinder on, one which holds the bracket down. But yet yeah, the thing is still not moving at all. It's wobbling, but it's not actually coming off. I don't know what else I need to undo. This is about half an hour of undoing stuff so far, because everything's just very, very welded into place after, after time has played its merry dance. I wonder if there's a bolt on the bottom of this inside the car. All right, this is where I learned I've actually got way more to do than I thought I had, because I've got this whole uh, carpet panel here, which is hiding, well, some of it's, the accelerator pedal is holding it in place, but then once I've moved that, the brake pedal bracket, and there's rubber pipes up here, which go through the dashboard for the heater, and they need to come out too. I guess we'll cut them out and replace them. I'll start off with this one, because that needs to be taken out. Longer or shorter? Oh man, alive. Oh, longer. Okay, out comes the accelerator, that's easy. Right, it's all easy job and all that. Right, okay. Oop, there goes the washers. What was that? Is that something? Oh, that's very rusty, whatever that is. It just fell on the floor. Right, now I'll move on to taking the steering column out so I've got better access to the pedals. You may be wondering why I'm jumping from the engine bay to the interior, but it's basically because that, um, what do you call it, uh, master cylinder is not budging. So I'm just wondering if there's something underneath the dashboard in the footwell that's anchoring it and I need to move all of this stuff out of the way in order to see it. I could have saved a bit of time if I'd read the book, but pff, who does that? Just one big pinch bolt and out comes the steering column. This really has been a bit of a learning curve. And it's, in many ways quite similar to a lot of stuff I find in the P6 Rovers, but on the other hand, very different indeed. There we go, that, oh, I'm just wiring undo the wires. That's a very modern looking clip for 1969, I have to say. Quite impressive, really. How does this undo without breaking? It just pushed out. That was quite easy, really. Oh, I wonder what that... Because this wiring loom has been messed around with in the past, I'm concerned I'm going to have issues when things go back together. That looks very modern from the outside though, but from the inside it's huge spade connectors which do look very, very 1960s. Right, I think I probably am going to keep this um, mounting steering wheel, I quite like this. Right, where next? Oops, today's it, right. More carpet comes out. I'm going to have to go and buy a complete new carpet set for the car, but I knew that already. That will make a huge difference to the interior. Ambience. Can we see anything under here? Oh, there's a there's a bracket and stuff. I can't really see where it goes to. I'm going to undo. Oh, my hood is falling across my face. Right, let's undo this uh, pedal bracket, and I can see behind there. I, of course, do realise that this is very much the easy bit. <laughs> Undoing everything is not particularly tricky. It's putting it all back together again when it gets too hard. 
and more to the point, expensive. Right, I'm back in after a couple of days break. Uh, slight problem, the Freelander won't start, dead battery. Um, so a little less room to work, so I can't actually open the door. So working through the windscreen, which is the best way to work, I find. But it does mean I have a whole new perspective on this, and I've managed to find these two bolts, which I was struggling to see previously. So I guess that's something you can count as a good thing. Where's my half inch socket gone? Using the vintage stuff today. Is this not a captive nut again? This has to be a captive nut because there's nowhere else for it to be. Oh no, it's not. It's, it's a loose nut. These two are both loose. How on earth are you supposed to get? There's nowhere for it to be. It's a good magnet. That's hammered up through there. Let's try and get this out now. This took uh, several days of soaking in Bulldog for this to actually release because it was not coming out otherwise. A suitable drift, as they say. Wow, that is well and truly rusted in place. Man, this car, there's not much of it, but it doesn't want to come apart. Got it free with mole grips in the end. I guess I'll need a new bush in there, or new bushes. They don't look too bad, to be honest, but, you know. That end, though, pretty much toast. Oh, brackets ready to come off. It's so full of mud and oh, I don't know, tree bits. But yeah, that must be attached on the inside. Since I can't move the Freelander, I'll do something else for a minute. I need to move these or lose these. Oh, that comes out quite easily. Radiator hoses. Well, that one be as easy. Yes, wow. That was easy. A pile of detritus is coming quite large. Hinges they can do with coming undone because they're very much in the way. That feels like a half inch spanner again. Because I wasn't planning on coming here today, I didn't bring my ratcheting spanners again. Which was a mistake. So that's too big to get in there. Right, had to go and attack that one with a metric because I left my Imperials at home. But that is thankfully, well, I loosened it off with an Imperial. That's one less thing to keep impaling myself on. Ah, I wonder if these things are different left to right. I don't think they are, but... Ooh, there's a little curve on that. But they're both the same. Okay, that's interesting. They've both got a, pre a con concave or convex, depending which side you're standing on, um, little thing. I will make a mark on that, though. This is driver's side. It's so much easier to get access to stuff when you've not got an engine in the way. Mm, well, this is one of the things that's going to be easier to take the hinge off. Oh, that's rusty. That looks really rusty. It's a proper rat's nest down there. Now I've got to play hunt the other fixing bolts in amongst all of this stuff. So far, I can only find one fix fixing attachment. Yeah. I'm guessing, oh there it is, there's the other one. Down there. Gonna bulldog this so and so. As so many things over there are rusted into place, I'm moving on to the outer stuff. The bezel was missing its bottom screw, so it just pried off nice and easily. This actually didn't unscrew too difficultly at all either. Interestingly, this is a sealed beam lamp, but the side light bulb sits on the back of it. Well, that's very interesting to find. Um, all right, let's pop you just there. Trying to avoid bouncing that onto the floor. Don't actually know if this works or not, to be honest. Now, this all needs to come out, and I haven't remade really like a mental checklist of stuff I need yet, but this rear ring does not look particularly happy, so I suspect I will be changing that before the car goes back together. This aluminium forward ring, though, looks quite nice. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's an adjuster, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 
Well, this is very crusty indeed. Oh, most that came undone. Well, the first one came off quite easily, apart from that final bit of bezel at the back, which was having none of it, frankly. Um, yeah, those screws are well and truly rusted in. Let's see what these new, these bezels cost to replace as well, because they are very much a finishing touch. So I obviously don't want to damage these, but at the same time, I suspect I won't be using them. There we go. Full of, ugh, full of dust and rust. One thing I wasn't really sure about is why these have got um, springs holding the, um, the metal aluminium panel into the back of the light. Uh, is that for just steadying it to stop it vibrating maybe? I don't know. Right, so I need to go head back to home again. I'm gonna carry on in a few days time or later on today perhaps, I don't know when, very soon. Right, day three of pottering in the barn, taking bits of the mini off to get it back down to the shell that it needs to be. Uh, today is an interesting one because I forgot to bring a tripod. So I've just realized what the next item of equipment for the barn is gonna be after this thing, which I bought just a minute ago on the way over here. Because this is very much in the way when I'm trying to get cars in and out, I found. This uh, light box effectively is a warning flag so I don't drive into the engine when I'm trying to maneuver around here. So what I wanna do is take this off the little wheel dolly so I can have the wheel dollies back and then raise the engine up enough to put the engine onto this dolly here and probably take the wheels off as well so that make it a bit smaller to tuck into that corner. Right, so bear with. And meanwhile, as I say, um, apologies for the slightly weird angle of the camera, because without a tripod, I've had to reverse the Freelander out of the door and then rest the camera on the bonnet of that. So yeah, there might be some slightly odd angles on this particular episode. I don't wanna get my hands dirty, because I've come over in the Rover 75. That lovely wooden steering wheel needs not to get ruined. Oh, I have an issue here that is very, very close to the glass doors, and as I'm tipping it, I'm hoping that the other wheel dollies don't go into the glass and ruin that. All right, extendable breaker to the rescue. Whoops. Oh my God, that's heavy. That's heavy. That is literally how you do your back in. Oh, that's where I lose the window. Oh, right, so I've got the... Uh, the scissor jack out of the uh, Rover 200. So I can lift that up with that. If I can get that high enough, then that can roll in underneath there. And down it comes. And now, in theory, the whole lot should be able to roll forward. There we go, that's a bit easier. Right, let's find a screwdriver. Oh look, there's a screwdriver. Ugh. What the size that is. So yeah, with these wheels off, I can lose these, um, what do you call them, dollies, other dollies, back into the garage, making getting the cars in and out of the garage much easier. Because the uh, Mini's actually sat on a couple of these dollies as well, I've got four of them, and none of them are available to make cars moving in and out of the garage easy or possible at the moment. Although I'm gonna use one to put the, um, the roof tent on actually. <laughs> that would be really nice to have that option as well. Right now, can I get this thing to wibble off? Yes. In fact, it can just drift off the entire thing like a, whoops daisy, let's not lose them. That, you can lose that, look at the state of that wheel, that's manky as anything. What a mess. So that is now smaller and easier to deal with. I'll pop the other one off as well. And that means this engine can then pop into that corner of the garage, or the barn, much more easily. It was pretty much weighed down like a boat anchor before. And of course, while the uh, body is in pieces and being painted and stuff, all of this front end will come apart. Re-rebushed and all everything else like that done. Excellent, right. One down, one to go. 
and that is brake number two. My God, it's got drum brakes. How did I not realize that before? Yeah, on both sides, uh, that tire does look a wee bit flatter than perhaps it should be. That's actually got incredible tread. It looks like it was a brand new tire when it was parked up. Um, can't see what the brand is, it's squished max something. Anyway, it's not any good anymore. That's going in the bin. So we have got to make a decision about what wheels we put on this car. I'm thinking in terms of the future for paint, obviously gonna stay sandy beige as it always has done because that is the car's original color. And it's kind of cute and fun and different. Um, but I'm thinking a black roof for contrast would be nice. I'm thinking rather than these little sort of daisy wheel, cute, very sweet hubcaps, maybe go for center caps and slightly wider steel wheels with just a sort of basic center cap or no center cap at all. That might be quite cool and basic and give it a slightly rally car -y kind of vibe, which would be quite nice. I don't know, there's still many, many options and decisions to be made, but it is gonna keep the original tartan red interior and for the most part, the original sandy beige on the outside. Right, so yesterday, or like the other day when I was up here, the thing I got stuck on was taking this pedal bracket out for the brakes. And I was trying to work out where these two go to. It turns out these two bolts just here are held by buttons just there. Now I've got the door open, not buttons, nuts, <laughs> just there. Now I've got the door open, much easier to figure this out. The whole no tripod thing is making this quite interesting. I've got the uh, camera balanced on a pile of used carpets. I'd actually forgotten, I've got a complete set of 3 8 socket drive um, Draper sockets over here. I don't know how I forgot I had these. Um, oh boy, I brought them over here and forgot about them. Anyway, good to know I've got them because I can crack on with this now. Found a sharp bit down here. Previous welding, I can actually see now, looking at this, uh, if you can't, but there is, I think, previous floor pan welding evidence along the edge here, so I might have to take all of this out again. And I don't know, I see groin marks on it actually. So yeah, once it's all ground back, I might be starting that over again, just because, you know, do fresh. When I was reaching through the windscreen, I really could not feel this at all, because I couldn't get my fingers around the wrong side. So now, can I remove, or I can move that bracket at any rate. Oh, no, still no. Why does this not come out? Oh, it does come out. The stuff came off the front. Aha. What fell off over there? Uh, oh, just a, a lamp bezel. This, I guess, is the other side of that. I must get a book about how this all comes apart. So presumably there must be some kind of split pin or circle or something holding this all together. Oh, blimey neck. Oh, I see, yes, there is a split pin. I'm seeing a little bit more rust down there as well, actually. So, I don't, you probably can't see this at all. Right, so I don't know if you can see this or not. I expect you can't, but there is a split pin just behind that huge spring on the back of the brake pedal. If I get that split pin off, that rod that goes directly up goes into the brake master. So I need to get that brake split pin off that. I realize this isn't the best view, but without any kind of tripod or camera support, there's a new approach to making YouTube videos. YouTube videos without the uh, video aspect and with pretty bad commentary. There we go, split pin out. So in theory, that should now wheedle free. Aha, that feels freer. Oh, I see, there's still a little rod. Aha, uh -huh. uh, yuck, okay. Little rod that split pin came out of. As we'll go together, let's keep it all safe. <laughs> that's now free. So that's the brake pedal assembly removed. Let's quickly remove this at last because that's what was, there we go, that fork at the bottom, that's what the split pin and the rod were holding in place. So that's now out and free. Let's balance that just there for now. Also this bracket is now free as well. So this is all ready to be sandblasted. off. So I'll put the light down here. 
and you'll see what I was seeing, which is little holes, little holes. So I think once this thing is shot blasted or dipped or whatever, we are going to see quite a few more little holes, but nothing I hope too significant. Blimey, that took forever. It's amazing how much more we can get done if you've got any clue what you're doing. While I'm in here taking off big, easy targets, I might as well just whip off the handbrake as well. It's quite nice doing this half inch stuff. It's um, reminiscent of working on the P6. And the handbrake, you should note, isn't actually connected to anything. It's just a big handle in the middle of the car at the moment. There we go, another big chunk of the interior removed. I'll put those bolts through there so I don't lose them. And that's another thing, taken off the car. Okay, now I would really like to get this little in control panel here out. I think there are just two little tiny, tiny weenie screws on the back of it. Let me see, I'll try and show this up to you. Now, whether or not you can see this, but there should be a little tiny weenie. I don't know what size it would be in, in Imperial, but it's gonna be about a four millimeter in metric at either end that I need to undo. So, a bit working by touch here, I think, probably. So this is actually coming off with an eight millimeter. Ugh. And actually coming off by hand as well. Not even needing a socket at the minute, although an extension bar would've been handy to get a bit of access in there. Oh, I need an extension bar back in there. Yep, extension bar time. Okay. Now I can get some out. Probably, and I can't. Right, so this is now hopefully ready to pull out, although the fact I've got, <laughs> yeah, as I unintentionally demonstrated there, the choke and the heater cables pushing through it. Right, so let's try and get this wheedled out. because there's nothing on the other end of these choking thing cables, it shouldn't be too hard. Although we have got the uh, actual wiring loom in there as well. There we go, that is now free. Although what I won't do is take it any further than that because I need to take a couple of photos of that and also to get some masking tape and label it all so I know where every single one of those wires goes before I go any further. Right. This is, I'm gonna call, a good place to stop because I've been up here three times now. I spent a few hours on this, quite a few hours in fact, struggling away here in the barn, stripping away on the car, and you haven't had a video on it. But then this is all stuff that takes a good while to do. Whoop, there we go. I realize you're now on the wonk, but that's just because I've put the camera down on a thing. Anyway, so, thank you for watching. So now you can see the Mini is progressing pretty well actually, we're getting a lot of stuff done. It's virtually at the stage of just being a bare shell, which is where we need it to be, so that uh, we can send it off to be just turned into, well, a clear metal shell and we know exactly how good or bad it really is. I'm suspecting not too bad, to be perfectly honest, so um, I'm not massively, massively worried. Well, I say that now, I'm still covered in paint and under seal. We'll see what happens when you've seen the Crown Victoria, I guess. I need my cup of tea. So yeah, there's lots more to do, but I think it's probably only a couple more hours of, of stripping stuff down and that will be there. Uh, I'm probably underestimating massively because the doors will keep putting up a fight. The doors need to be stripped as well because I'm sure there's rust in them. Just not much really, just the niggles. We're onto the niggles at this, this point in time. But anyway, Mini is progressing. Anywho, thank you for watching. I do appreciate your time and your patience putting up with me waffling on. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, as always, please hit like and indeed subscribe. And don't forget, um, if you want to help support the channel and the mass of expense that is going to be this car, um, because it's going to need all new hydroelastic, which is going to be four figures. It's going to need a full paint job, which is going to be several four figures. Everything needs rebuilding. In this new interior, it's thousands of pounds worth of, of work and just me toddling around with a screwdriver. Then please do consider becoming a channel member or channel Patreon, which helps keep these things going um, at a pace. Um, and if you are a channel member or Patreon, you get an extra little video once a week or so. You get to do the questions of the Q&A things, which um, I'll put out once a month. And you get a 10% off discount code for the Furious Driving Shop. Thank you for watching. I'm going to leave now and go and get some dinner. Good night. It's pizza tonight, by the way. <laughs> See you later. Ta-ta. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.
Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below.